So I'm just going to give you a couple examples here with simplifying radicals and making sure we're okay with where we want to put numbers and how we're going to get that simplified. I'm also going to pull out my calculator. Um, when we went in this in class, I just sort of was prime factoring on my own, but in case you're sort of struggling with that, getting it broke up and prime factored, I'll give you some tips on and just sort of making sure we remember how to do those types of things. Okay, so let's say we want to simplify um, the square root of 96. So our first objective to simplify a square root, right, the idea is that we want to find the largest perfect square that will go into it. The problem is that sometimes we might not always see that. Okay, so we can always pull out the perfect squares by going the route of prime factoring. So if you type the 96 into your calculator, you can just think of any number that will go into 96. So for example, this is even. So I know I can split this into a two. So I'm gonna divide by two, which means this is then going to split into the two that I divided by and the 48 that I got out as my answer. Okay, and then I'm gonna split up the 48. So maybe I know into 48, I can do two again. Okay, so that's gonna split into two and 24. Again, I didn't even type anything new in my calculator. I just put divided by two. It pulled the 48 that was already there. So that's two and 24. I see that I can divide by two again. Now, you don't have to do two every time, so maybe when you get to 12, you wanna pick four and three. Okay, the only thing that matters is that you get it divided down as far as it can go. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five twos. So we have one, two, three, four, five twos, and then this three, right? One, two, three, four, five twos, and the three. Okay, now once I'm here, what's actually happening is I've now just rewritten 96. So this still says the square root of 96. I've just wrote it out in a prime factored form. Okay, and I'm gonna look for all the pairs. So here I have a pair of twos, and here I have another pair of twos. Okay, so again, what's really happening, okay, is I'm really splitting these pairs into their own sort of little category and leaving the uncircled stuff left over. So this says two times two is four, but the square root of four is two. So if you don't wanna mess with writing this line down, what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, this is one pair. So these twos count as one pair. Two shoes make one pair of shoes. So I'm gonna write this down one time. Okay, this is also one pair, so I'm gonna bring that out. The pieces that we did not circle are going to stay inside the square root. Okay, and then anything that's in the same location, we're gonna multiply. So the two and two both came out, which makes it a four, I'm gonna multiply those. The two and three both stay in, so I'm gonna multiply those, which makes it a six. And so our simplified answer of the square root of 96 would be four square root six. If you wanted to check and make sure you did it right in your calculator, you could type in the square root of 96 Okay, and we get this big long decimal. You just have to kind of look at it and see what it is. And then type into your calculator four, and then the square root of six. And notice you get the same decimal out, so we know that those are equivalent numbers. Okay. So let's look at another one. Maybe let's say we want to simplify the square root of 60 y to the fifth. Okay, again, we're gonna start by prime factoring. Okay, so 60 splits into six and 10, six splits into two and three, and then 10 splits into two and five, six is two and three, 10 is two and five. So if I put those in order, it's a two, a two, a three, and a five. And then I also need to account for my y to the fifth power, which is gonna be a y times y times y times y times y. Okay, so I'm gonna circle all of my pairs. So I have a pair here, here, and here. Okay, so anything that I circled is coming outside. And again, it counts one time. So this counts as one, two. So I want two times y times y, right? And y times y is y squared, so that gives me a two y squared. Anything that I didn't circle is staying inside and getting multiplied together. So three times five is 15 times the y is a 15 y. And so here's my simplified answer there.
Right. Now, if you have something that has larger exponents, so maybe something like the square root of x to the 50th, y to the 17th, Okay, writing those out 50 times and 17 times can be really tedious and really frustrating. Okay, but if we want to find pairs, circling pairs is the same thing as dividing by 2, right? That's the definition of finding pairs. So if I just take this 50 and I divide it by 2, that's going to give me 25. Right, if I'm dividing it by 2, it's going to give me 25. That tells me how many pairs there are. So I know if there's 25 pairs, I need x to the 25th to come out in front. Okay, if I do 17 divided by 2, yes, it's a decimal. Okay, so if you want to use your calculator to help you, if you do 17 divided by 2, we'll get 8.5. Okay, this means I have 8 pairs. So I know I have y out here. This 0.5 is really 1 half. That means I have 1 left over, which means I have 1 that wouldn't, be have, wouldn't have a pair to circle with, and it's going to be left over on the inside. Okay, then I'll give you a quick hint for your homework on that last row. If we have a number sitting out in front, so maybe we have something like 3 uh, square root 20. Okay, we can prime factor and simplify this 20. Okay, now the square root of 20, when we go to simplify this, right, we have a pair of 2s. Okay, so I can pull that 2 out in front and leave the 5 there but you're gonna have to do something with this number out in front. So think about what operation is happening there and what you wanna do with those two things to get your final answer.